So now let's work around with hair simulation and hair dynamics inside of Cinema 4D. In order to do that, I'm going to go over here and drag a sphere just like this. And I'm going to decrease the number uh, of its segments to around 10, just like that. So I got only a few faces to work with. So I have the shading turned on. So I, I enabled NB right here. And you actually see this NA disables the shading and B you get the face. So I'm going to convert this into a polygonal shape by pressing C and I'm going to select the faces where I want the hair effect to actually be applied. So I'm going to select the top four faces right here. This is where the hair is going to be. And I'm going to select this part as well. And I'm going to select these parts over here at the back, just like that. So I'm going to select these parts, as you can see, and I'm going to select these parts. So it's kind of like a human hair, as you can see. So it's kind of like a face. I'm going to deselect this one by pressing control click. There you go. So you can see that I'm going to select all of this, just like this, just like a human, as you can see, a human face. So now I want to apply the hair there. So I'm going to go over here on to simulate and I'm going to go on to hair objects and I'm going to press add hair. Once you do that, you can see that hair is here, but it does not actually look like a hair. So in order to uh, actually see the hair, I can go over here, press Ctrl R and the hair will be simulated. As you can see, uh, it's a straight hair just like this. And hair by nature is really dynamic uh, by default. So you can go over here and then I can actually play this and you can see that there's the dynamic thing playing on. So let me just increase the frame size. Uh, so that actually I can actually work around with it. So you can see that I increased the frame size right here. So if I were to play this, you can see that the hair dynamic actually plays out over here. So if I were to go over here onto the side, press Ctrl R, it'll actually render out that hair for me. You can see that it is like a hair now. It is acting more like a hair, more like a natural hair, as you can see right here. So this is happening because the dynamics is turned on. So you can go over here onto dynamics and you can turn the dynamics on and off. So if I were to disable the dynamics right here, you see right now nothing happens over here. But if you were to enable the dynamics, you can see that this actually happens. And there's collisions, that means the hair bumps into each other. This is actually necessary if you want the hair to behave normally. And if you want, if you turn on rigid, that means the hair will stay just like that. So you see over here that the hair is rigid right here. So if I were to turn this off, it, it actually goes down. But if I were to turn on the rigid, you can see that it is wiggly right here. And if I were to move along uh, the space right here, uh, the, the object right here, uh, and animate it, the hair will animate along with it and it'll become rigid just like that. So if I to press Ctrl R, you can see that it is straightforward. So if I were to go here, you can see that it is a rigid hair like that. So I can go over here and now it's dynamic again. So just like this, you can enable the collision, disable the collision, so it looks much more like that. So you can see that this is how you can work around with the hair and we'll learn about how to um, work around with the colors of the hair, the texture, and the further hair editing tools in further lessons. So hope you guys learn something as always. And as always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe.